are adipoetin alpha or epigen, okay? This is an, a medication that's indicated for anemia. Its therapeutic class is anti-anemic and its pharmacologic class is hormone. So let's talk really quickly about how our body knows when it's time to produce more red blood cells and how that really works. So our blood, you can really think of our blood as like a messenger system. As our blood travels throughout our body, it's providing a tremendous amount of data to our body, you know, through positive and negative feedback system. It's it's providing data to our kidneys, to our brain, to our lungs, to everything about what's going on in the body. So you can really think of our our blood and our bloodstream as really like this data stream, this data system that passes throughout just continuously delivering millions and billions of points of data to our body, then leads to our body doing things or not doing things. And this is what we refer to as positive and negative feedback systems. Well, red blood cell production is part of the system, right? As our body, as our blood passes through our body, it will eventually pass through our kidneys. And in our kidneys, it's providing so much data there. And our kidneys play a role in, in, in either initiating or stopping a lot of what goes on within our body, okay? So blood passes through our kidneys. And within our kidneys, and in our kidneys, if our if they sense that our blood is low on oxygen, okay? So what will happen is our, our kidneys will sense that our blood is low on oxygen carrying capacity. Our blood is low on oxygen. What it will do is it will release erythropoietin, okay? okay? Erythropoietin is a hormone that tells our body it's time to produce more red blood cells. And the process of producing red blood cells is called erythropoiesis. Okay, so what happens is this, this then stimulates our bone marrow, to start producing red blood cells. Erythropoietin is released from our kidneys that then stimulates erythropoiesis and stimulates our, our bone marrow to produce more red blood cells. So that's how the process really works. And in our patients who are chronically anemic, they might need assistance with this, and that's why we would really give our with uh, and our or the epigen. We wouldn't really give it to a patient who just has low RBCs one time or something like that. We might just give them a transfusion. But in a patient who's chronically anemic, who maybe has RBCs of less than 1.5 or 1.8 or so, they may be a good candidate for epigen. So hopefully you're understanding how that kind of works, okay? Why our body is going to stimulate erythropoiesis and how epigen or, or epoetin alpha is going to play a role in that. What it's really going to do is it's going to stimulate this erythropoiesis um, where the patient is chronically anemic. So a couple things to keep in mind here. These anti-anemics that we give our patient, they can actually increase clotting, right? We're, we're stimulating this red blood cell production, which can then lead to additional clotting. So in a patient who, uh, for example, is on dialysis and possibly has a shunt, it's really, really, really important that we keep our, our renal patients' shunts fully functioning and clear and, and perfusing and everything. So in a patient who has a, a dialysis shunt, what you really need to do is you really need to assess that shunt, make sure that it's working really well. There's two things that we really do to assess shunts and assess if they're working. Hopefully, you know what I'm going to say right now, but I'm going to say you need to assess for brewy and thrill. Okay, what's a brewy? Well, brewy is the sound that you're going to hear uh, with your stethoscope as you put that to the shunt. And what that sound is, is that's blood flushing and rushing through the shunt. And then there's a, the thrill is the fill that you're going to get. It, it really feels like just rushing blood. You can actually fill it. Now, those are two good things. I remember the first time I heard about brewery and thrill uh, in nursing school in my physical assessment course, I thought maybe they were bad things, but they're actually really good things. This is what you want. If you can assess and hear a brewery, then you know the blood is flowing through that shunt. If you can feel the thrill, then you know that blood is flowing. And we want blood to be flowing through the, the shunt. That means it's patent. That means it's usable. Now, what can happen when we give our patients epoetin is that it can actually increase clotting and, and possibly clot off that shunt. So we really want to assess that, make sure it's working. First thing we do when we get to a shift, that's what, what's what I really want you to understand and take away from this, is the second you get on a shift, assess that shunt right away. You don't want to wait till dialysis time in the morning or in the evening, or, or if you're running uh, dialysis on your shift, CVVHD or something, you don't want to go and fill that halfway through the shift, see that it's clotted off, and then need to call the provider at that moment and say, uh, it's not working. Well, when did it stop working? Uh, I don't know. You want to assess that first thing. This is one of those things, central lines, shunts. These are one of the things that you assess first thing you walk into a room uh, so that you can see if it's working before your shift even starts. <laughs> We're also going to initiate seizure precautions. Uh, this can actually lead to seizures and possibly cause seizures. So we'll initiate seizure precautions for patients who are on epoetin alpha. 
It's also contraindicating hyper or albumin hypersensitivity, and we want to definitely monitor our bleeding times. Like we said, these anti-anemics can decrease our bleeding times, increase clotting, so we really want to be careful and monitor our bleeding times. And one thing to really keep in mind here with this is never, ever shake the vial, okay? We never want to shake the vial uh, before we give it to our patient. So these are really important things to keep in mind. Biggest thing I want you to keep in mind is, is just this whole anatomic physiologic phase that that stimulates red blood cell erythropoiesis and what role the blood, the kidneys, and the bone marrow play in this, and then why we're going to be giving epigen to our patient uh, and how it really plays part in this biofeedback system in our body. It's just truly fascinating. And then keeping in mind that we're always assessing our dialysis shunts uh, for these patients. So those are the biggest things to keep in mind here. And this medication is epoetin. This has been another episode of the MedMaster Podcast by NRSNG.com. To get our free cheat sheet covering the 50 most commonly prescribed medications, head over to NRSNG.com slash 50 meds. That's NRSNG.com slash 50 meds. Thank you so much for joining me today, and thank you for being part of the NRSNG family. We're here to help you succeed in nursing school and in life. So start your journey today over at NRSNG.com slash 50 meds. We're glad to have you aboard. You know what time it is now. It's time to go out and be your best self today. Happy nursing, y'all.